responsibilities are beginning farmer market development. And under the market development hat, um, I, because of my background before, I was a farm management and dairy cattle management educator before I came to this position. Um, numbers is important. So I think that, that in market development, one of the first places, particularly for the producer of a product, it could be, it can, it can be an ear of corn, it could be you know, barley, it could be beer, it could be you know, whatever. You need to know what the costs you have in, in producing that and, and ultimately getting it to the, the person who's gonna receive it, whether it's the, the customer that shows up at your brewery to uh, purchase a growler, or if it's in step back a little bit to the point of a farmer selling some malted grains or some small grains to a brewer to turn them to that beer. You need to know all of your costs. So that's what we're gonna spend a lot of time this morning talking about is trying to figure out the process of figuring out what those costs are. Um, I'd like to learn a little bit more about you so that hopefully can, can as best as I can, try to make this as realistic and, and applicable to your particular situation. So some questions I've got for you is, is that, um, who are farmers or who are growing small grains in the audience? Will or are. Will or are. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, kind of those that are growing, how many acres are you growing at this point? About 30. 30? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, what do you do with the small grains? Um, what I did last year is I sold, I took a little uh, effort, but I, I found a, uh, <coughs> not real close by where I am, but I, I found a uh, malt, malt house that was, you know, more potato. And, uh, for there, the, the biggest issue I ran into was, you know, with the combine the grain in uh, August, and, you know, was, uh, fortunately, uh, Neighbor of mine had some storage, right? So, you know, so he would you know, sort of minimal minimal cost. He was, you know, he let me get a small bin on his farm, and I did the store there. And, um, the problem with Randy with Malster is, is he didn't have his, you know, he was kind of a startup as well, um, okay. and, and he didn't have, he basically didn't have his storage ready until about, you know, end of November, first part of December. So, sure. Um, but I did have, you know, I mean, I. I, mean, I did have, after I kind of made, committed to sell to this other guy, I, I had a few other inquiries about, uh, you know, people looking you know, to, to buy the grain, but it's a bit of a, you know, sort of a, uh, you know, kind of uncharted waters. I'm, you know, I like a lot of dairy, but, you know, you, you get pretty used to the effect that when your dairy and the milk truck shows up, you know, exactly. every other day, and then the, the, uh, you hit the check twice a month, and it's, you know, you're, you're kind of, uh, Floundering around in uncharted waters when you're, you know, getting into this business. Exactly, exactly. And it's not, and it's not as much. It is the business, but it's also the fact that that were you a member of a co-op, or did you sell directly to a, a producer or a processor or for, for free milk? Free milk. Milk. You know, a member of a co-op. So yeah. See, they did the marketing for you, so the, yeah. Yeah. The milk truck showed up, and that was all of your, yeah. your distribution and marketing was all taken care of for you. So yeah, a little bit different a little bit different landscape now for you for marketing and, and moving your product. Um, any malt houses or people thinking about starting a malt house? Okay, good, cool, we like that idea. Uh, we need more of you. Um, okay, so we, we heard about how you sell your products, how you sell your small grains, so that's good. Thank you for, for that um, overview from you folks. The malt houses, I would say, on the same thing, a lot of what I'm, this is more I'm talking about the grain side of it and the process of think, calculating the cost for grains, but a lot of what I'm gonna say will also apply to you folks as well. Um, and I'm sure that you know if you want to my help or some assistance from, from me or any of my colleagues in Cooperative Extension, there are probably some Excel spreadsheets or some budgets out there to help you kind of think about, or we can even help you kind of from scratch kind of come up with a an enterprise budget for looking at what it will cost to run through a malting grain through your, your, your uh, malting house. So um, how many, well for existing farmers or asset farmers when I talk to them, how many of them have a pricing strategy or a marketing strategy 
Um, uh, not too many hands go up, but to be honest, every farm that, that grows a crop and moves and sells it does have a pricing strategy or a marketing strategy. It can be something like being a member of a, a milk cooperative where, where cooperatively uh, farmers have come together to, to market and distribute and, and move their milk product to, to um, you know, farmers markets, um, CSAs, you know, other models as well they, to develop a marketing and pricing strategy. <clears throat> what I want to do today is kind of help you think about, we're going to um, put it in terms of, of the context of this talk, is, is that we're going to be talking about small grain production and what we want to achieve through this talk is, is talk about, again, I want to tell you it's about the process. Let's not get hung up on the numbers um, because to be honest, <coughs> uh, particularly for the production expense numbers, these are from Pennsylvania and from North Dakota is what I used, okay? So I know, I know, okay, I know <laughs> that the numbers are gonna be different for New York State, but it's more the process of what we go through. There may be some other things that you say along the way, well, that number isn't right, it should be something different. Well, okay, but what we want, what I wanted to help you kind of go through is look at how do we come up with the assumptions that we're going to use to base our, our numbers on, and then the, what is the whole flow of how we put these numbers together to come up with a, in this case, a per bushel price. So what I have come up with, and I've used this, actually I did use this with vegetables and for fruit, and actually meat as well, for more of a direct marketing point of view, is that come up with a seven line pricing strategy. And what we have here, as far as relative to, to grain production, um, and I would think to some extent this would also maybe to some extent fall into the same um, model for a malting house as well, is just that we've got the production from the, the farmer. And these are, a lot of these are, are, what we're looking at here as far as pricing is, is that the, what all are the costs that go into coming up with the final and ultimate price that we're going to charge the purchaser of this product. We've got production costs on the, on the um, small grain side. Here, if you're the farmer, we know what costs, or got a good idea, and there are plenty of enterprise budgets out there for small grain production. I'll show you one that, that I um, adapted from Penn State to, to um, work with. Um, we've got storage costs. You, you're, you may be moving the, the grain out as quickly as right from the combine right onto a truck and out, but oftentimes that's not the case. That you have to hold on to the grain because the, the malting house or whomever doesn't necessarily want it all, all of your, your production at once. Because maybe they're getting it from other places as well and they want kind of a stream of, of grain over X period of time. One, one of the other things I found with, with the storage is because um, you know, you, after, after you get a combine, you know, they want to do like a, like a test on you know, it. Yeah, absolutely. Poly, poly test. It also needs, you know, to, and then they have to do some uh, like a germination test on it. Sure. So they're not, you know, so, and you have to get like the, basically like the, like the fusarium test or the right, 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 right. And so, so if, if you're basically what they told me is if your brain doesn't pass this test, you know, we don't want it exactly. So in, until you get into, you know, so that that's another, you know, bottom, you know, hold up when you just like you say you can't just run it out, you know, run it out of the combine, out of the truck, and haul it off. Usually they they want at least at least to a, at least that was my experience this year. Right. Exactly, and I think that would probably be the key every year. Um, so there is going to be some, some storage. There's also potentially some processing. Um, and processing in my context, and it, again, it could be your, how you can talk about processing. It's just the whole model of thinking of processing here is, is that we've got it in storage. Um, there's got to maybe be some cleaning of the grain, whether the, that's happening before you put it into storage. Um, that's I'm not sure, that's up to you, but I'm thinking there may be some cleaning, processing, augering, you know, you gotta get it from out of the bin onto a truck at least, very least, so that there's gonna be some costs associated there. Marketing, we'll talk a little bit more about what costs I think of as far as marketing um, when we get to, to dive into that. 
We've got distribution, which is basically delivery is what I'm calling. And then I want to encourage you to, to think of, for any of you, is that you've got to build in some profit. You're not doing this as, as well, maybe you are, God bless you if you are, are doing this for the benefit of the of humankind, for society, and that you don't want to make any money in doing this. Okay? However, on the downside, I'd say you're not going to stay in business very long if you don't think about building profit in. So we got to talk about profit. So that all of these things ultimately lead up to the price that you're going to charge per unit, whether it's um, per bushel, probably multiple houses. What do you what do you anticipate charging on a pound or a volume basis per bushel, or per pound, or per hundred pounds, or whatever? You do it per pound. Per pound. Okay. So basically, you got to figure out the, your price. What is going to be your price on a per pound basis for farmers? It's probably on a So we're going to talk first about, and what we're going to do is we're going to go around the, this wheel here and talk about each of these and have a little bit of discussion. Again, talking about the process that, that I'm suggesting that you want to go through. Whether you, what the process that you use is the same and you're including the same things, or maybe you are, maybe you're not including something new, but, but basically the the, the fundamental part is, is that there are some key things for each of these that we want to talk about. One of the first ones what we're going to start with is production and the thing of, about variable and fixed costs. Is, does everybody understand what variable and fixed costs are? Is that what the words mean? Yeah, in context of expenses and doing enterprise budgeting. Okay, variable expenses will, will, depend, will vary or as it term implies varies with with the production and the in, and how much activity you have so you know if you're planting if you're planting five acres of barley versus 30 acres of barley okay seed definitely is a variable expense because you're going to need more seed to plant 30 acres than you do um, uh, five acres um, fuel you know repair and maintenance on machinery in theory would be more because you're using the tractor more. You actually, you definitely are burning more fuel to, to till, plant. You are, you, you are combining. Well, for another example, is if you're using custom combining five acres, it's not going to cost as much as 30 acres to custom combine. So those are very fixed costs are, are expenses that don't change no matter um, how much yield or inputs that you make. Some things to be thinking about would be depreciation on your equipment. Whether you use that tractor 30 minutes or, or uh, 100 hours a year, the depreciation on a tractor is the same. Okay, land costs is another thing that would be um, also, um, and the way I would approach it, and we'll talk about more when we look at the spreadsheet, is to say that it's that. Um, might use some type like of a land rent cost. You know, what would you typically have to pay for land rent to rent that ground, even if you own it? And that can be your, your land cost. That, say for say for $30, whether you grow a half an acre or a quarter acre of um, barley on that on that field or use the full acre, it's still costing you $30 to have that acre of ground. So those are some of the, the differences between variable and fixed costs. So I want to switch over to the spreadsheet now and kind of walk through it with you to show you how I, again, we're talking about the methodology. And this is pretty straightforward stuff. Um, generally accepted, I mean, you can come up with your own enterprise budgets, but this is kind of looking at, at um, enterprise budgets for small grain production from a variety of, of other land grant universities. This is kind of it tries to account for all of the, the expenses that you're going to have in the production of small grain. So we're basically starting off, well, first of all, with our income. I'm going to apologize if I sit down for a minute. So we're, we're looking at our yields um, and, and took these right straight off of Penn State, whether we're getting these kind of yields for wheat and barley in New York State, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but we're coming up 
in this one, we're, and I'm including it, but the income that we're looking at here, we're not necessarily using. It, but it's a place to start as far as um, <coughs> figuring out if, if and at all this is going to be profitable. Because basically what we're looking at here are, are market values, you know, commodity market values for these grains. So we're looking at, you know, seven dollars for wheat, four and a quarter for for barley. I don't think they're gonna hold this is for for um actually for fifteen, I don't know if these prices are gonna hold for on the commodity. Um we and we get towards the end we're gonna talk about this more again. We also not only do we have the grain, but we also have the straw as well as income. What do we um, get for that? Then we get down into the the uh, expenses. We're, we're starting with our variable expenses. Um, we've got our seed, lime, fertilizer. Um, one of the, the Penn State budget only won't spray all together so you can do that. I broke it down so that because you know how much you spend for a purse and again according to the year um, you may spend or think that you might have to spend more on fungicides than other years because um, it is uh, something that we have to worry about with our humid weather here in the, in the Hudson Valley in the Northeast. Um, soil tests, labor that's relative allocated for the growing of the crop, um, just the growing the crop. In this example that I put together, the custom work is custom combining fuel. There's no drying costs. We didn't necessarily dry it, need to dry it, or, and if we did, we could put that potentially under our storage costs, actually. If we uh, augur it, put it into the bin, and then um, dried it that way. One of the things I want to point out here concept is interest on operating capital. What this, basically what this is, is, is in, in economics term is what we're calling an opportunity cost. Oh, I know what the problem is. Never mind. Can't use my rule. Um, this is what we call an opportunity cost. Um, you've made an investment in growing this crop, okay? And from a hard Parted economic point of view, you had options potentially. Well, you have options as to what kind of investments you can make. You didn't necessarily have to put that money into the crop. So we're, we're kind of charging some interest. Plus, the other thing is, is that you you're also um, either maybe borrow money, but even if you didn't borrow money from a financial institution to be able to plant this crop, you still have, you have. Our, the, the crop has borrowed money from you to put it in, so it should pay you some interest for being in the ground and growing. So for crops like small grains, particularly winter grains, where there is a, a significant difference between the time that you plant it and make the investment in, in getting that crop in the ground to when it's harvested and you have the potential of making money on it, there's like eight, 10 months or so, potentially eight, 10 months. So we're charging some interest so that the crop is kind of paying you back um, some interest for the investment that you've made in. That's what the interest on in operating capital is. So we come up with a total variable cost, and these are all on a per acre basis, by the way, in case you're wondering, these are all per acre values. So we come up with roughly about $300 for barley, two seventy nine. dollars I remember my name. Um, no, yeah, for, for week, and then we get down to our fixed costs. Again, basic. What we're doing is is that the tractors that we're using, we're, we're saying it could be a variety of different tractors, but what we're doing is taking a little piece of the depreciation from each of those tractors and saying on a per acre basis what it is, does cost to um, get 
or what's the depreciation out should I allocate for that particular tractor? Also the equipment, the for tillage and for um, um, if your herbicide application, land, and then um, this is something that, that you may or may not want to include because basically I'm building, one of the things I'm doing right here is building some profit into this. You may leave this zero because we also are going to calculate and figure out uh, profit later on. But basically this is, this is a number of what would you like to see as far as your return, for what you've invested as far as labor management into this growing of this crop on a per acre basis. What kind of return would you like to see? So it's kind of a profit figure that you can use now or, or not use at all. So we have our total fixed costs. So this is our total cost here. And we ended up with a, a, a uh, what I hope or think is a fairly nice, or uh, at least on a, from the positive point of view, we did end up with a positive net income for all of these. <coughs> um, this spreadsheet, if you look at the very last, I'll say it now, if you look at the very last page of the, of the slide handout, there is a link to a blog or a website, and this um, spreadsheet will be posted there, or is posted there, plus some other references. For example, how do you, for God's goodness, how do we figure out how much depreciation should we allocate to growing of our small grains or whatever? Um, I'm going to, there will be, it's not, I haven't totally posted everything there yet, um, but I will, there are some very good um, tools from the University of Iowa and other places that snow. 
yeast came in and decimated a lot of winter wheat fields. Um, could happen with barley too. So um, you might only get 40 bushel to the acre or, or 35 bushel to the acre. Well, what this does, break in even yield, is give you an idea of what your comfort zone is as far as, and is another risk management tool to say, if this, if the break in yield was closer to say 60 or 65 bushel to the acres, what you need is to break even, to produce to break even, um, you look at that and maybe say, well, gee, is that a crop that I really want to grow or not? Because it's pretty close to what my um, anticipated yield is. Whereas, you know, our our yield here was was, was 75. Our our break even yield 35. You got some wiggle room there to still be able to make some money on this crop, uh, even if you don't get what you expect as far as the yield is concerned. Stephen, the uh, interest on operating capital. Um, how do you use that? I mean, what is operating capital in this scenario? Is that the interest rate you're paying the bank for equipment or for just a general? It, it's only on your variable costs. Yeah. So it's not your fixed costs. Okay. So you take out equipment and only figure what interest rate you would be paying. That. I mean, what, where does the five percent? The five percent is basically kind of a of a, a generally accepted um, interest rate for the cost of doing business. Okay. It's basically you can use whatever you want. I mean, right now, you know, the only thing that I would say, well, you know, what what <laughs> what kind of return would you like on your money? Twenty five. No. <laughs> um, reasonable. Reasonable. But you know, on the other going the other way, what with interest rates in some ways three four percent now well probably not it's probably for a short term it's going to be probably, it's maybe even six or seven percent for short term now um, I mean you don't want to gouge yourself either so that's probably one more. and then this is basically how many from the, the, the date that I planted to the date I harvested okay. is, is the, the time that's spread over and it's not compounded it's not anything it's just basically looking at basically straight across what it is. Any other questions about the production?